Kia ora and welcome to this first lesson on the periodic table which is part of the Chemistry in 48 Hours series. The periodic table lists all the chemical elements, both naturally occurring and man-made. This table doesn't show all of them for the sake of simplicity. The lanthanides and actinides have been left out. What are elements? Elements are chemically the simplest substances known. They can't be broken down further by chemical means. You need a nuclear reaction to change one element to another. Uh, later on, you'll have another definition of an element. The periodic table is arranged in a certain way. The horizontal rows are called periods, and the vertical rows are called groups. Now, the elements are broken down into two or three types. First of all, we'll look at the metals in this lesson. The metals you'll see on the left-hand side going towards the bottom right. What are metals? Metals have got five um, properties in common. They are always lustrous, once you've shined them up, because um, they can go dull, but they will shine up. They are ductile, they are malleable, they are thermal conductors, and they are conductors of electricity. Let's look at each of these in more detail. First of all, they are lustrous or shiny. So they are normally a shiny grey, but there are two metals that have a different colour, which are the um, copper, which is a reddish brown, and the gold, uh, as shown in the gold ring over there. Here we can see the ductility of metals. You can see it's being made into a wire. As we'll have a quick look, you'll see that it's, this machine changes a thicker wire to a thinner wire. And you'll see it on this side. There is the thinner wire coming through. Or there's a thicker wire going to be made into thinner wire. Here we can see a piece of copper metal being hammered into shape. It's going to be turned into a copper bracelet. Some metals need heating to do this, um, like, for instance, a blacksmith shaping a, a iron horseshoe. But otherwise, metals can be hammered into shape. Think of panel beating and so on. Here we see photos showing metals as a conductor of heat. So if you heat iron nails, you can see that the heat is traveling through the nail, which makes metals very good for cooking utensils, as you can see in this pot. Uh, copper and gold are very good conductors of heat, and so that's why you see copper bottom pots. You don't get gold bottom pots because gold would be too expensive, and also the gold would melt at high temperatures. Here we see examples of metals as conductors of electricity. Copper and gold, again, are very useful. Um, in this field, they're very good conductors. So you'll find copper wiring in your homes. You'll find gold is used in the electronics business, like in your computer, because it's a really good conductor. In the electricity substations, they use aluminium a lot because it's also a fairly good conductor. And um, aluminium is also light. So the top photo there shows the aluminium wires used in the overhead wires. Now, time for practice. Match the property with its meaning. So pause the video and quickly match it. Here are the answers. Did you get them right? So some more practice. List the five properties of metals. So pause the video and see if you can do that. Here are the answers. Did you get them right? Lustrous, malleable, ductile, thermal conductor, and conductor of electricity. Finally, time for tips. It's very useful writing things down, so have a pen and paper handy while watching these lessons. You will remember more. Finally, time for a rather weak joke. Goodbye, and see you in the next lesson.